All right, guys, time for a battery update. All right, this is the battery that we're talking about here. This is a gonna be a rack mount, but also a wall mount uh, and enclosure for the 16S, right? 48 volts uh, LEV 60 cells, the lithium ion phosphate, right? It will be a little bit smaller than your typical, uh, you know, five kilowatt hour rack mount units. Uh, because those are usually 100 amp hours. This one at 74 would only yield about 30, almost 3,800 watt hours, right? 3,788. Um, and so, but I think what we're going to do is offer this as a kit before until we can figure the shipping stuff because shipping something this big and this large, uh, it's, it's, well, it's, it's hard. And so, you know, unless you buy like a pallet worth of them or, you know, at least four of them so that we can put in a pallet, it's almost like, like not use, uh, not very cost efficient to do it right and so for that reason i think we're gonna offer this probably first as a kit but first i have to finish the design and this is what this video is about i'm showing you the improvements that i made as of as of last time right last time i showed you a little bit of what this uh was going and how i was dealing with some of the um design constraints and some of the challenges that i had and so i this is the second iteration i guess this is the second part and so I'm going to tell you what it would do. So first, what I was trying to do was trying to, obviously, what you try to do is minimize the amount of parts, right? Because the less parts that you can get into design, then the cheaper it's going to be and the simpler that it's going to be, right? And so what I was trying to do was trying to eliminate this plate right here. This is the plate on this side that will compresses the cells. And by compressing the cells, well, two, it compresses the cells, which I think these might need uh, in the long run. Uh, we are not 100% clear that because the spec doesn't specify that but also what the compression does is a way to actually mount the cells and you know keep them inside of the box and so this is the compression plates these are two plates that are exactly the same right and so it's just one on this side one on the other side and so what i was trying to do is minimize uh, eliminate this plate on this side and so i drill some holes in here and then i put some uh rivet nuts in here and then i was just like gonna use this um wall here as this side of the compression right now there were some issues that arise from that and as i've been playing with this for an hour or two here i realized that maybe that's not the uh, good way to do it about it yes i would eliminate one part and so a little bit of cost in here but it would introduce a few more issues like for example the fact that this whole plate this is an l right and i'm trying again eliminate uh the amount of parts so that's why i'm making the bottom and the back side as one piece already bent right um and so what happens is that this is uh well this is really thin i mean it's, it's thick enough to be a nice sturdy enclosure but it is not the thickness that it required to be to compress these cells and so when i was putting that in there what ended up happening is that this was deflecting a lot and so in order to fix that i would have to add an internal plate uh just to stiffen this side up and i'm like well if i'm doing that now i'm not saving a lot <laughs> because i'm adding another uh piece in here right and so also the other point that was happening was that then it doesn't give me a place to add the the french cleat so this is a french cleat uh, a few of you guys suggested this as a way to hang this battery and this is just kind of like a an angle uh plate that goes on the outside of this and then it'll it'll just hang on another one in here right so in order to attach this on the back side of this box well i need to be able to have screws go through right and so if these cells are right up against this then there's nowhere to put them because then i would have to then raise the cells up to allow for that and now i would have to increase the whole width or the whole depth of the box which is a standard um i think i said last time that it was a three uh space rack unit but it's it's actually more a four so this is actually a four then there's a five over there so this is within the that thing so you will be able to stack it and it makes sense if i had to add another quarter inch or an eighth inch or whatever then all of a sudden gets in trouble that you won't be able to actually well use stand racks to do this right or because if i have to raise it just a little bit more then i would have to add it like a whole space which is i don't know an inch almost like 1.7 inches i think that's how it works out so then that would make a box that is much bigger than it actually needs to be right and so 
I think we're gonna keep this and we're gonna push the whole battery pack that way and then leave this. A benefit of doing that then it is that because this is the back end of this box and I'm gonna put um, handles in the front of here when people are handling this, right? Either for shipping or for installation purposes. What is then that most likely gonna end up happening is that they're gonna, uh, they're gonna probably drop, if, they, if anybody drops this, then it's probably gonna drop it on this side. And so if I have the cells right up against the back wall here, then the cells might get damaged. But if I have a little bit of room in here, then this can deflect, this can get damaged, but the cells can stay remain safe. And so that's another uh, pro, another advantage of having the cells not be right up against the back over here, right? Just to give you, so as it stands right now, the cells are not touching any of the outside other than the bottom. Uh, the top, even the top is going to have some air gap in there. So uh, so that's a good thing because if you damage it, you drill some holes or, or dig or deflect the sides because something dropped into it. Th there's a little bit of wiggle room there before the cells actually get damaged, right? And so that's, that's a good design feature, I think. Uh, on this side over here, um, I had kind of made a, uh, an error here, but I realized what it was. The measurements weren't completely off. This is asymmetric. Uh, the, the screws here are not, you know, uh, uh, the same distance and stuff. So, so I had it backwards when I put the, uh, the design, the way that it was going to be bent, it just ended up being backwards. So then I was like, oh, they're not that bad, but they are a little bit off. You see how those buttons here are a little bit off. So it's, I think now I've, uh, adjusted the, the, you know, the dimensions there. So those holes are exactly um, center where this is at and it allowed it to put those little, those little buttons that go into those things right here, right? And so now you'll be able to put the little button and it'll look something like that and it'll be look a little bit more finished, right? So that's that's the thing. Um, also, the, the I'm gonna use a PCB here on the front. Uh, I don't know if it's by itself or I'm gonna uh, put a backing, a metal backing in here and then put this as a front thing, just so that I could easily have all this text in here. And also for some isolating purposes, right? Cause these are gonna be live positive and negative or negative and uh, positive and negative. Uh, and so I wanna put some little uh, other boards that overlay here that ha are like color coded. So this one will be black and this one will be red. And it'll, ha it'll be a little bit elevated here. It'll just be really easy to be able to tell which post is which. Um, I might have to put like a divide. I, I don't know. I'm thinking of a few ideas here, right? Um, but I'm gonna use PCBs because those are, you know, FR4. That's just fiberglass board, and that's a good insulator. And so that's gonna be the thing. Um, here, it's gonna be a full-fledged box, just like all the other ones that are on the market that are 48 volts, right? Uh, rack mounts. They so basically it's gonna have a. A, uh, a circuit breaker here is gonna have an on off button i think i just haven't done that because i have uh i haven't actually connected this yet to test how it works that there's a connector in there that i don't know what it is for i think it's for the on off button so then i will have to choose a push button and then order that because this unit the uh, bms unit doesn't come with one so i'll you know then i'll have to source one out basically but then finally i got all this dimensions in here correct now so now i can put them in there and everything fits and stuff and everything's labeled uh and so we're getting really close i'm waiting for these parts uh to come in to try them and as soon as those work out then i do that and i order another part that has this correct the dimensions here now the other thing that i'm doing is um just figuring out how the the wiring is gonna lay out um what it, this is actually not that hard it seems like a giant mess in there but i wanted to see if these cables that came with the bms worked in this scenario and it does right there, it's a little bit messy in there maybe we can even use zip ties to make it a little bit neater when we actually do this or in the final productions or in the bills or in the how-to videos right uh there's this cable that has to go to the positive so the positive is going to be here but the positive is going to go to the circuit breaker and so maybe when we crimp the circuit breaker here we'll crimp the other cable that goes on there and so now you just have a place to connect it uh i don't know this needs to be before or after the circuit breaker we'll have to uh we'll have to look at the design or the literature if there's any literature on this bms thing right 
Um, other than that, the other things that I have to figure out is now the balance wires. And these are all the balance wires. I separated them. I separated the four uh, temperature sensors. And those, uh, I think what I'm going to do is just put a dab of uh, silicon or some thermal paste in, that is going to go in here and then just glue them in here. Probably one here, one there, one there, and one there. So then it's kind of like in the center of the pack. There's four of these uh, sensors, right? And they reach there. So that's fine. I think we're gonna do something probably to put like zip ties in there so that you can run those wires in there. Now these ones are the, what, what six, so 17, it should be 17 wires that are the balance leads. And here I have put where the little connector is gonna be, which is, has like little uh, terminals, right? Uh, screw terminals. So it should be really easy to you to stick that cable in that little ring on a little connector and then just turn a screwdriver and put it in there, right? But I don't like the fact that I put this right in the center here. I did that for symmetry, but you know, sometimes symmetry doesn't work. And so the fact that th these are gonna be live and you're gonna be doing this thing in here, you, you might short it out when you're trying to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redesign this board to push it this way and I'm gonna put it right here because there's nothing here. And so it will be a much better designed to just go straight in here. And you could cut these and then splice them, or you can just use the, the thing as they are, because they already come with like pretty uh, thin. And and so then you could just use this a zip tie to, you know, put the rest of the the extra cable in there, right, the slack. And uh, so I think I'm gonna de redesign that. Also, the other problem that we were discussing last time was the fact that uh, this, this is really close here. You see that? So I'm gonna show you right here. There's plenty of room there. You don't need a lot of room. There's about uh, three eighths of an inch, something like that, right? So eight, about eight millimeters or something like that. Uh, between the top of this box and the top of those those uh, nuts, right? And so that is that is enough to be isolated. But you know, if, if this box ever gets dropped upside down, then these cells are going to go and touch the back of the casing here, right? And so I need to be able to isolate that. And so, I think what I've come up with is I'm gonna make holes here. I'm gonna put standoffs uh, every so often here. Just put a, a set of standoffs here that are gonna actually, when you put the case in here, is are gonna be touching the case. And so that way this battery is not flopping around in there, right? And so if it ever gets flipped around, and if it ever drops or something, this literally cannot, this literally could not go and touch the, the top, the top, uh, surface of this case in here, though the the you know the cover of this, and so that's one way I like that because then it does give a little bit of um, well, it does give some room uh, between that and this. But the other thing now that I'm thinking about it is that if I put standoffs now, those are small little things that if you flip it around, if there's enough force now, you jab those into the cells here. So maybe that's not the best. Maybe what I need to do is do like a solid thing. Maybe we'll do like, um, uh, I don't know. I think I might have to rethink this. Maybe standups are not the best way. And what I need to do is just do a sheet of, uh, of FR, right? So maybe like here, or maybe like a angle tubing or something uh oh yeah check that maybe that out so see there's nothing going on here well i'm gonna put the connector but let's say that i could find another place to put that connector if i run to a square tubing in here right and so it's in between here there's nothing that is conductive here and now the the top sits on on top of that square tubing and then on top of this then that's a much bigger surface area that's not gonna jab itself in there. Maybe that's what's gonna end up doing. I still gotta figure that out, uh, but this is where I'm at right now. Let me show you what it looks like with the cover on. Okay, so here is the, the top. It slides in really easy, and now you have all these holes so that you can put screws and it attaches to the bottom. I have put these extra screws in here to put L brackets if maybe that's how you wanna mount this, right? So we're gonna have some, some options. Uh, and then also this version, I'm, you know, I'm designing two versions of this box at the same time. I want the same box to be able to, to use it again for as a, as a rack mount unit with the screen on the front like this, but also as a wall unit. And if you put this on the wall, you don't want this screen in the front of here because this is going to be the bottom. So you won't be able to see it. So that's why I put it in here right now. Eventually I will order two versions of this 
of this cover, but everything else is going to be the same. And so that's why I'm trying to figure all the the features of design out the way the um, the dimensions right and get them when I get them right here then I just transfer them up here and that's it but also I did wanted to see the mechanical to see that putting the screen over here was not going to interfere with anything on the bottom because again we don't have a lot of room in there right and so that's what why this is here I just tested that and there's plenty of clearance inside there so that uh, I can make both of these designs work at the same time so that is how this battery is looking like so far. I know that was a lot of rambling. I know that was a lot of stuff. And I know that I'm still designing this as I'm, as I'm showing you here. Um, uh, but anyways, this is just, uh, well, this is actually not that short of a video, but uh, anyways, this is just an update on this design. I'm trying to get this as soon as possible. I'm also working on other designs for the smaller batteries, also like, uh, you know, steel cases for them, right? Because uh, it's always, it's, I mean, this is our kind of naked batteries and they're cool to look at and stuff, but you know, in the real world, you need to just kind of protect them and isolate them from the environment and wherever you're gonna install them. So casing, putting a full case on a battery, that is the best thing to do. And that's what separates the, you know, the, 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 the really crude DIY from the really advanced DIY. And we wanna be source towards the advanced side of that things, right? Uh, since we've been operating this thing for a few years now. So there you go. I just wanted to give you that update and I will see you guys on the next video. Stay tuned if you like this, if you're interested in these cells, uh, they have great price right now. They're not gonna last forever. We have a time limit as to when we need to purchase them. And so in order to purchase them, we have to sell, <laughs> sell a certain amount of them. So they're going to go. We can't just keep them in stock, right? So we're just we're trying to move them and stuff. And so if you're on the fence of getting some high quality, really affordable lithium iron phosphate, and now that is, you're going to be able to, you know, DIY a nice little case and stuff, and that this is not, you know, just some crude thing put together, then this, this is it, right? So, all right. Thank you. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Oh, 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 oh